According to a study done by woodwindmusic.com, only 13% of people between the ages of 16 and 24 know how to play a musical instrument. Hi, my name is Mark Folsom, and I'd like to tell you about what I did this semester. For my senior project, I chose to re-explore my passion in music. Uh, in the past, in middle school, I played saxophone through fifth and eighth grade. Uh, here's pictures of me and me playing the trombone when I was a little kid. Um, I really enjoyed music and it was a passion for mine. I really enjoyed working together with a group of people to um, come together, make a common goal, and like a finished piece of music. So this semester, I decided that I was going to decide to learn the piano. Alongside um, learning a new instrument, I was going to do some research. So my research was what impact psychologically does music have on the mind and what uh, difference can music learning an instrument make on a child's brain development and the differences between adult learning an instrument for the first time and a kid. So here for the first aspect of my project, we got the research. So uh, up in the top left, you can see the corpus callosum, which is located in the back side of your frontal lobe. Uh, well, that's kind of where it's placed behind your frontal lobe because it's the connection between the left and right hemispheres of your brain. It's the only place in which information can travel from the left to right side. And as a musician, when you're using pieces of your brain, such as like the auditory cortex and the motor cortex all at once, you need to be sending information rapidly from the left side of your brain and right side of your brain constantly. But a huge difference between kids and adults comes when you're uh, learning an instrument in your corpus callosum. So for kids, because you still have more plasticity in your brain as you're younger, your brain is more apt to change and your corpus callosum can widen. So I think of it kind of as like the voltage of the connection. More information can move through um, the corpus callosum at once. Well, if you're an adult, um, you've kind of lost this plasticity with age and you can speed up the rate at which information travels through. You can kind of polish your skills, but you can't, um, your brain can't adapt like you can when you're younger. Um, and then you got your motor cortex, which is in, um, which is really key for like any musician where you have to push down keys. Like I, when I'm playing piano, I gotta know what chords I'm pushing down. So I have to take that information that I get um, from seeing the music in my visual cortex and using my motor cortex to push down the right keys. Um, then I kind of have the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for um, kind of how I decipher the music. So one musician may read the music a little different than everyone else. Everyone kind of has their own style of playing and kind of how you express how you play, what accents you decide to put on it is determined in this prefrontal cortex. Um, you have the nucleus, acumens, and the amygdala. This is really like how you react to the music. So if you liked a certain piece, if you decided that it was good, how you choose to want to change the music in the future, this kind of happens there. So then you have your sensory cortex, which is where you feel, where the keys are down for me as a pianist. Um, then your auditory cortex, which is your instant feedback as a musician if you did it correctly or not, what um, notes you played if the key came out wrong. It is not necessary to play, like a uh, famous musician, Beethoven didn't have um, functioning hearing when he wrote his famous Seventh Symphony. Um, he did it purely on vibrations in his sensory cortex. Um, then your hippocampus and cerebellum are both kind of used um, for memory. Hippocampus is long term, cerebellum is more like um, you don't have to think about it in memory, so like people say muscle memory. So when you play a piece so many times, you don't have to like see every piece of the music to know what piece, like what, before your hands shift, where you're going to play. Um, and your visual cortex is necessary. Uh, it's in the back of your brain, where your brain processes every, all the light that your eyes takes in, and you can see what notes uh, are on the sheet music and what you're going to play. So then for the second aspect of my project, I actually decided to learn the piano. So I spent uh, the 35 classwork hours of my project um, learning the piano, and I did face a couple challenges. So in the past, like from middle school, because I had not played uh, for years, I kind of remembered how to read treble clef, but I bass clef, I was lost. I had no clue where to start, but I did kind of understand how music was written. So I was able to teach myself, because I had not had formal lessons scheduled until like a couple weeks away. So I begin to talk, teach myself, and my mom plays the piano pretty well, and my sister is kind of learning the piano. She is a, she plays flute for sixth grade, so I had a lot of fun. Like she'd try to challenge me and learn a piece, and I would try to come back and uh, learn it myself. Um, I really enjoyed learning to play because it was kind of like a balance for me. Uh, like when I would come home from a basketball practice, sit down and play for 20, half, 20 minutes, half an hour, or like between homework sessions, get a little bit of work to, or play a little piano 
and kind of reset my mind. And for the third and final aspect of my project would be the lessons I had with uh, Jackie Warren. She, uh, I met her, she was the organist at my church, but she also does uh, extra, like she plays the piano here for the band and the chorus when they need someone. Um, she, uh, she majored in piano pedology, pedagogy, which is like the study of teaching piano, and she's extremely good at what she does. She really helped me get through, like, it was kind of weird as a 17-year-old kid for the first time going into a piano studio with our four and five-year-old kids coming out who are way better than I will likely ever be. So kind of going in for the first time, like knowing that learning a new skill as an older kid is like a good thing, and it was something new that I could challenge myself with, so she helped me with that. I also talked to her a little bit about my project and the research aspects of it, and she lent me a couple books, and um, she kind of taught me a little bit about how she, about how the brain activates in multiple areas at once when you're playing music, and not just one area at a time, majorly like a math or science uh, thinking base would do. She also taught me about a story of a kid named Michael. She used to teach who has ADHD, or he has ADHD, and um, how he has to learn music a little differently because he doesn't have the capacity, he can't focus and like read the music, so he would learn it by patterns. He would watch her play and kind of try to repeat what he did um, to create and copy, to create the music in a way a little different than most people. Um, so my conclusion, if I had a takeaway to go home with today, I'd say um, I hope you know some of the benefits that come with playing music and how the brain um, is impacted a little differently when playing music versus doing uh, standard other things. I hope you give it a try, because I really enjoyed playing music. It's something I'm going to continue to do. So thank you. you have any questions? Um, Teddy. What's your favorite song you learned to play on? Um, favorite song you learned?